I'm Alex Spears. And I'm Carmen Ponciano, and this is Spoke TV, your source for weekly local news produced by second-year journalism broadcast students from Conestoga College. Whether it's donating a little here or there, the region of Waterloo is doing its part in helping the families affected by the Syrian civil war. Waterloo Region is stepping up and helping sponsor families from Syria's civil war. So far, the region has donated over $25,000 to the cause and has been able to sponsor several families through the Mennonite Central Committee. The committee is working with communities, churches, and schools, including Wilfrid Laurier. The university is working with the committee to sponsor two families who hopefully will be living in Waterloo and in Bramford. Construction work for the LRT in downtown Kitchener has not only taken a toll on city streets, but also on local businesses. Their customers are having a hard time finding places to park. Matthew Bentley says that the city is attempting to fix the problem by proposing a plan to extend parking hours. Here he is with more on the story. Hustling and bustling, that's the feeling you get when you enter the Kitchener-Waterloo core. Construction of the light rail transit system is fully underway and citizens have been feeling the effects of it. With many main streets, including King Street, Caroline Street, and Charles Street, either closed off or reduced to one lane, it makes it really hard for people who run businesses or work in the downtown core to find parking. City-owned parking spaces are $2.25 an hour on weekdays with a weekend maximum amount of $10.75. A new proposal is being drafted for councillors to address parking concerns by extending free parking hours for city-owned lots during weeknights and weekends. Sarah Marsh, a counselor for the city of Kitchener, gave her thoughts on a possible proposal for extending free parking. Well, I think that would be very fair to the downtown businesses because they are suffering from uh, the, the construction. I'm standing here in front of a construction site in downtown Kitchener. This is what it looks like all over the city as roads are being torn up or closed off completely. David Worsley, the owner of the store Wordsworth Books, had a few things to say when it came and, to this proposal. No. The city of Kitchener has to do a little better job differentiating apparently between public and private parking lots. There's a thing in the local paper today suggesting there's been trouble with ticketing and uh, oversight, but they at least are talking about it. With people still struggling to work through the ongoing construction, many are hoping that the proposal brings about some positive change. For Spoke TV, I'm Matthew Bentley. The Citizens Police Academy is one way that the community can stay informed when it comes to getting to know the police force and the legal system. Peter Scott reports that it is a good opportunity to create an open relationship between the public and the police. As Waterloo Region continues to grow, it is important for new and old residents to be familiar with the police services in the area. The Waterloo Regional Police offer a program that teaches local residents all about the police with the Citizens Police Academy. The Citizens Police Academy offers two 12-week programs a year one in the spring and another in the fall that allow up to 40 participants to learn more about the police force and the legal system. Participants meet on Thursdays from 7 to 10 p.m. to talk about many topics including crime trends, fraud, forensics and traffic enforcement as well as other topics. They discuss these topics with the police force members and local judges, attorneys and professors. The program also includes a tour of the North Division and shows a day in the life of a patrol officer. Second year Police Foundation student David Stump believes the program will help civilians gain a newfound respect and trust for the police in the region. I think it's really good. Um, it, I think it would help with the public um, more, more trust within um, the police force. Um, I feel like it would uh, really help with the public seeing how it works and what they actually are taught to do and um, what they uh, have to do as police officers. The fall session kicked off on September 10th and will wrap up on November 26th. Now, dates for the spring session have not been set yet but they do recommend that if you want to participate, you apply online soon. For Spoke TV, I'm Peter Scott. E-cigarettes and vaporizers have become a new trend and an alternative to traditional cigarettes. Some feel they can be an effective way to help quit smoking while still getting the satisfaction of having to smoke. Sarah McKeever has more on the health and regulations of e-cigarettes. An addiction to smoking cigarettes has plagued many Canadians over the years, with the ability to quit being very rare. Over the last few years, alternatives to smoking cigarettes have become more mainstream. Devices such as electronic cigarettes or e-cigs and vaporizers are giving smokers and non-smokers alike an alternative. Jay Field is the owner of Voodoo Vapes in Kitchener. Along with the sales of vape liquids and accessories, it is an environment where those who wish to use their vaporizers can do so in a friendly manner. 
He says that vaping is one of the best ways to get people to eliminate the ill effects of cigarettes, but to keep their satisfaction of puffing smoke. So typically, um, when you quit smoking, you try to gauge a nicotine level based on how many cigarettes you, you're smoking. Um, and then the goal is bring yourself down in the nicotine until uh, you get right off nicotine if you choose. Under Ontario Bill 45, better known as the Making Healthier Choices Act, the sale of electronic cigarettes is prohibited to those under the age of 19. At this time, the use of e-cigarettes or vapes is prohibited in enclosed workplaces and enclosed public spaces, and the display of these products are partially restricted to discourage sales in an effort to make Ontario smoke-free. For Spoke TV, I'm Sarah McKeever. Everyone knows that when it comes to maintaining a healthy lifestyle, drinking tea can go a long way. Now there is a new carbonated probiotic tea making waves in the health community. It's called kombucha tea. Ali Sieber Payton is in Guelph with the owner of Canada's third largest kombucha tea brewer. Kombucha tea is becoming a big trend right now, mainly for its health benefits. The tea is a fermented drink made with tea, sugar, bacteria and yeast. Kombucha is becoming more popular because it's usually brewed locally and you can always find it at your local store or at the local farmer's market. We talked to Lauren Ip, a kombucha brewer in Guelph, whose company is the third biggest kombucha brewery in Canada. Yeah, uh, kombucha is a fermented tea probiotic, but making of it is fairly simple. Uh, many people make it at home. Uh, all you really need is a good tea of your choice. You need uh, a good digestible sugar, all right, in order to feed the probiotic. Uh, and uh, you need a space or a container in order to ferment it in. There are many benefits to kombucha tea, also known as booch. We reached out to a personal trainer in the London area. Rick Hunter explains to us why it's great for people and why he recommends it. Kombucha has many known benefits. Uh, I think the most important one is when it comes to digestion. We're learning more and more about stomach health and how probiotics really impact your overall health and well-being and kombucha has yeast probiotics which are known to be very very beneficial to help you not only get digestion done but also with toxicity and filtering out toxins from the body. You can find the nearest kombucha retailer by simply googling kombucha. You can also buy it at David's Tea. For Spoke TV, I'm Alex Sear Payton. The start of November marks the beginning of flu season. Children are now lucky enough to get the vaccine without having to get the shot. Kids would be happy to know that this year they can get their vaccine through a nasal spray, but for adults it's the same old flu shot. Flu season usually strikes between November and April and can have a bigger effect than some people may think. It affects approximately 10-25% to 25 of Canadians each year. Family flu clinics are being held throughout the Tri-Cities for families with children age 5 and under. You can visit the public health clinics in Waterloo or Cambridge. For available dates and to book an appointment, visit the public health flu clinic online or call the offices. It's not every day you hear about a tattoo parlor giving back to the community, but one local studio is helping in the fight against cancer while potentially changing the stigma that comes with getting a tattoo. Matt Howell is in Waterloo with more. Perfect Image is a tattoo and piercing shop located in Waterloo. They're known for doing great work, but they're also known for giving back to the community. Their event, Tattoos for Tatas, raises money to support breast cancer research while also helping to change the stigma attached to tattoos. It definitely is changing. I think it's kind of on the up and up already. Um, people are starting to see it as not such a taboo thing. Um, they're starting to hire people, you know, with hand tattoos. Um, but having a more charitable event, um, just showing that it's, it's not just about making money. You know, there, it's very much a craft. Um, it gives an appreciation for what these guys do on a regular basis. They do this completely for free. Um, they're not making anything out of doing it. They also have to pay for their own supplies, so it costs them to do this kind of a thing. And they just do it because they're good people. Um, tattoos are not, you know. They're just genuinely good people. So yeah, I really do hope that it makes some kind of a difference that way. This was the third year for the event that featured music, snacks, and lessons on arm wrestling from the Kitchener-Waterloo Arm Wrestling Club. People waited patiently for their turn to get some ink with the tattoos taking roughly an hour to finish. This event brings people together, people who have gone through breast cancer or know someone who has. Along with the ribbon tattoos, the shop is also selling raffle tickets to win a free $300 tattoo session so even more money could be raised to help stop this terrible disease that will kill one in 30 Canadian women. My great aunt passed away from breast cancer um, 10 years ago, so yeah, I'm doing this in honor of her. For Spoke TV, I'm Matt Howell. The University of Waterloo has embraced a game that combines the skills of dodgeball, handball, and rugby. It also happens to be popular among Harry Potter fans. Quidditch has become a popular sport among the Waterloo Warriors. Shruti Rajagopalan has joined the team at practice to learn more. 
The University of Waterloo hosted its first Quidditch tournament last week with 10 teams across Canada participating. People are running all around the field clutching lengths of plastic between their legs. There is no witches, wizards or flying broomsticks. It's not quite the game J.K. Rowling invented in Harry Potter series of novels. Nathan Boutillier and Jacqueline Mile created this Quidditch club two years ago at the University of Waterloo. The game consists of 21 players with beaters, chasers, seekers and keepers. Just like in Harry Potter, this game has a snitch too. Vice President Katie Brown talks about how the snitch works in the game. Um, the snitch is actually a person uh, in this game. Um, so it's someone who's dressed all in yellow. Um, it's, it's very noticeable, it's really exciting. Um, lots of snitches get um, like gold cleats with like, so I know some have like feathers on their cleats, like snitches go all out. The University of Waterloo's Quidditch team, Waterloo Warriors, are practicing right behind me for their tournament on Saturday at the University of Guelph. This game is a combination of dodgeball, handball and rugby with a little of tackling. John Freeman talks about the role of the chaser in the game. Chasers and keepers score goals, so um, I guess on the offense we handle the quaffle. The university's Quidditch team is third in national ranking. Just like the University of Waterloo, a lot of other universities across Canada also have their own Quidditch team. For Spoke TV, I'm Shruti Rajakopalan. Whether you want a cup of coffee or are looking for a four-legged friend, Guelph's newest cafe offers both. Kelly Golden is in the city's newest attraction and explains how this kitty cafe helps with adoption of a new pet. Ontario has opened its doors to its very first cat cafe. My Kitty Cafe is located in the core of downtown Guelph. From the outside, it looks just like a typical variety store. However, at the back of the store is where the cafe is. Visitors can enjoy a cup of coffee and then head back to where the cats are. Kelly Robinson of the Guelph Humane Society suggests that you consider adopting cats before going to a breeder. Him opening up Kitty Cafe, he can open up spaces to hold way more cats, so this helps us out a lot because we get more cats in than we do out. So um, we currently have over 140 cats, so having that satellite location that can hold more cats really opens up uh, room in here as well. So it's just a great opportunity overall. I'm here at my kitty cafe where some of the burden has been taken off the Guelph Humane Society in finding homes for local kittens. Local residents can spend time getting to know a kitten over coffee, and if a bond is made, an adoption is an option. Owner of My Kitty Cafe, Min Kim, says that it wasn't easy starting up the cafe. It's, I'm, I'm in a pretty good dad. Um, so, you know, it, it was a matter of like, you know, you know what, if I do this, I'm going to be pretty, pretty tight with, with the budget. Regardless of whether you're looking to adopt a cat or you just want to sip on a cup of coffee while playing with some kittens, it doesn't matter here at My Kitty Cafe. For Spoke TV, I'm Kelly Golden. That's all we have for you this week, and thanks for watching Spoke TV. I'm Carmen Ponciano. And I'm Alex Spears. For more news and information, check us out online at spoketv.ca or follow us on Twitter.